Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson. What we're gonna to do today is something really fun with the blues. We're gonna take the blues scale in E and we're gonna play it at 10 different levels, okay? So if you like the blues, you wanna get good at playing the blues scale all the way around the fretboard, literally everywhere, all the way up to the 12th fret. We're gonna have loads of fun. I like to teach scales in unique ways. You know, a lot of people just say, oh, learn the box position and that's it, but learn all the different box positions. And it's kinda of like, that's cool, that's okay. It's well worth learning one box position, but. I really do like playing up and down one string, okay? I'll explain more of that as we go. So make sure you get the tab and notation for this, okay? It's for free, you can get it from here, this page here for free, and go to the description below this video just to click on that link, okay, get the tab and make sure you come back. So level one, can you do it with me? Ready, let's go. One, two, three, four. And again. Again. And that's four times at level one, okay? Add vibrato at the end for bonus points, okay? Level two, we're gonna do it in reverse. Ready? So one, two, three, four. And again. And again. One more time. Okay, if you want to add vibrato there, you just go behind the nut and wiggle that bit of the string. Okay, be careful with that, okay? Don't push it too hard, okay? Um, don't strain your fingers, because that's quite hard to bend the, the string there, but doing it behind the nut, you can hear the bit of vibrato. Okay, little bonus tip. Looks kind of cool as well. Well, maybe not, you tell me. Um, right, okay. Maybe I just think I'm cool when I'm doing that. Who knows? Level three, one, two, three. Four. And again. And again. One more time. There you go, bend it behind and up for a bit of vibrato again there. Level four, that in reverse. Ready? One, two, three, four. Again. Finally, one more time. Okay, that's cool. Level five then is where things get interesting. We're gonna play up and down the high E string. Okay, which gives us a bit of range in our playing, which is cool. We get to go up to the high fret. And it's really cool. It's a good way of playing scales up and down one string. I read in the book, The Advancing Guitarist by Mick Goodrick, he said how in the Western world, a lot of people like to use box shapes, but in Eastern music, people tend to go up and down one string a lot more. And it just gives it a different flavor. If you pluck the low E as a kind of pedal tone, you get a kind of like different flavors. Okay, so we're gonna play up and down the high E. So it's just zero, three, five, six, seven, 10, 12. Okay, then, the next level will be the reverse. So level five, let's try that. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so level six then, in reverse. One, two, three, four. So don't forget to get your tab and notation from this link here. Go to the description below and you can get it there for free. Next level then, we're gonna do exactly the same on the low E string. So it's not any difficult, really. If you could do it on the high E, if it's not any more difficult, you could do it on the low E. Same frets, zero, three, five, six, seven, 10, 12. On the low E, this is level seven. One, two, three, four. Level eight in reverse then, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so 
Right, so I hope you're having fun so far in terms of your fingers, which you're plucking with, which you're fretting with, you know, or if you're using a pick, which ups and downs you're doing. I'll talk about that in a moment, but let's do level nine first, okay? Which is a slightly different box shape, but it's a really useful one as well. So very much a bonus, and it's this. Okay, it's all fretted, and it's A string, fret seven to 10. D string, fret seven, eight, nine. G string fret seven nine. All right, so let's try that then for level nine. So one, two, three, four. Okay, and level ten is that in reverse. So let's start where we finished. So one, two, three, four. Right, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so what you might think is, well, what fingers do I use? What, how do I pluck it? What do I do? Well, really, you know, there's no hard and fast rules. There is best practices, okay? So if we go back to level one where we did this. You know, for every note, on, this is a box shape. This is typical for box shapes as well, by the way. So when you're playing uh, third fret, use your ring finger. Second fret, use your middle finger. First fret, use your index, okay? And that goes for the first couple of levels. So you go. It stops you jumping across frets with different fingers, okay? So anything on the first fret index, anything on the second with the middle, anything on the third with the ring. Pinky doesn't get needed because there's nothing on the fourth fret. And that goes for the first four levels, okay? But then when we get to that level five, six, seven, and eight, where we're going up and down the high E, then the low E, what do you do there? Well, you can use one finger if you like. It's not always the most efficient, okay? But all you can use index finger for third fret, ring finger for fifth, and then you could use pinky for six and seven. And then jump up with the index to 10. And a ring for 12. Okay, that's just one option. The beautiful thing about the guitar is there's lots of options. You can use different fingers, but that's a cool way of doing it. That's a good, efficient way of doing it. And you know, you should do the reverse when you go down. And that, uh, so when you start from 12, ring to, index and then you could pinky pinky ring index okay but find what works for you plan your route and stick with it okay then when we get to the final level this one's quite easy with the fingers really so when we're on fret seven index fret 10 with the pinky seven with the index eight with the middle nine with the ring seven index nine ring okay so that's a good way of using the fingers an effective way efficient way and you know you can keep being consistent with that really okay uniform you know like a machine in a factory bang 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 the same every time you want the same thing coming out every time not just random little things okay where who knows what's going to happen with the fingers okay because that is quite common people learn the notes but they don't plan their route they don't really know they don't have that template of what the fingers is are doing basically in terms of the picking hand, okay, if you're using a pick, the easiest way to get started is use all down picks. That gives you one less thing to think about, okay? But if you do want to be efficient, you'd use economy picking, where you pluck in alternate picking on the same string, and then when you change strings, you pluck in the direction that you're moving. So for instance, for level one, you could do all downs. Okay? And then when you do it in reverse, for level two, you could do all ups. Okay? Or you could do all downs again, but I like oops because I'm traveling in that direction. But economy picking basically what would be where I'd be on the low E string and I'd do down up. Then I'd do down on the A string because that's the direction my pick's going. It's going from low E to the A. So I'd go down, then I'd go up because I'm staying on the same string at fret one. Then I'd go down. Then when I get to the D string, I'd go down and then up. So for the level one, it would be down, up. Down, up, down, down, up. Because my pick there isn't having to jump over strings. If I pluck 
the low E string, then I go to the A string and I pluck the A string with a, a, a down pluck, it makes a lot of sense. If I pluck the down string with an up, I'd have to jump over it and it increases the chance of me missing it. So you just that's what economy picking is all about. That's economy picking in a little nutshell, basically. But you can use that if you're using your fingers and thumb, um, then just use your thumb. You know, all for every note if you like. That's the equivalent of using a pick and using all down plugs. But if you want to get fancy, you can use alternating index and middle fingers. Okay, that's a classical way of doing it. That's quite useful to do as well. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you get the tab and notation for this lesson. It really does make a difference and it makes it easier to learn. I've created it just for you, so I hope you enjoy. Leave a comment below and let us know what you think. So that's some little tips on playing it. I hope you had fun with that. It's a simple lesson, but there's a lot in there, really. You know, you're playing scales, you're learning about picking, you're learning about fretting. Your head might feel like it's going to explode. Um, you might need a lie down. If so, have a lie down, put some BB King on or some Eric Clapton on and just enjoy. Soak up the blues. Bring it into your soul, digest it, love it, play it, you know, and just fall in love with it and play it on the guitar. And keep watching all my blues videos because I'm going to have loads of fun. Okay, there's loads more on this channel. If you like the blues, check out this one here and have a lot of fun as well. Cheers, bye.